Hi everyone, my name is Anna Sachno, and today I will show you how to make such shell using polyester yarn. The one you're looking at right now was made of polyester yarn named caramel. The thread is rather thin, like a shoelace. I used a 6mm hook. The shell is 23cm wide and 28cm high. It holds its shape really well and is rather firm. I've used one and a half skins of olive-colored polyester yarn named caramel. You may use said shell as a basket and store some small goodies in it. Or it may serve as an art object or a decorative element for your home. In this tutorial I'll be using a different type of yarn. I'm doing it on purpose because I want to demonstrate how different types of thread look. In this case you'll be able to compare and make your own choice. The polyester yarn I'm going to use right now is round. There are 100 meters per skin, and one skin is enough to create this shell. This shell is a bit smaller, about 18 cm wide and 23 cm high. I recommend using a 4.5 mm hook. And anyway, while crocheting, you must ensure the crochets are very tight, or the shell to hold its shape. If you feel that your shell is too soft, use a smaller hook. 4.5 mm work best for me. Besides, I'd recommend this tutorial for those who already know how to crochet, who are familiar with basic elements and know how to make them. I'm talking about single crochets, double crochets and half double crochets. If you know all that, you'll do great and I'll be happy to guide you. But if you're crocheting for the very first time, I'd recommend starting with simpler patterns. Try some basic baskets, circles and bottoms. Practice for a while and then you'll get to more complex things. If you like my channel, you can donate so that I can translate more tutorials. Your donations will help me develop the English version of my channel. With your help, I'll be able to translate subtitles to English and voice over more tutorials. Besides, you may add subtitles in your language and thus contribute to the channel's development. I'd really appreciate your help. And now let's get to work! First we'll make two center circles. They are on both sides. And after that we'll start making the main whorl of our shell, gradually attaching it to both center circles. I tried to make the shell as simple as possible. That's why the center circle is rather unsophisticated. Make a slip knot. And then Six single crochets. You should get six braids like that. When all six are ready, pull the tail and tighten to make a small circle. Now we need to join our circle. We'll do it in a very standard way. Click the hook under both loops of the first stitch and make a slip stitch. Draw the thread through all the loops on the hook. We've joined the circle. Now we'll be making the second row consisting of double crochets. First make three chain stitches to get to the level of double crochets. Yarn over and insert the hook into the same stitch we started making our chain stitches from slip under both loops. Draw the thread, crochet two loops on the hook together and then two loops again. A quick reminder in case you've forgotten how to make double crochets. You pull the thread out and get three loops on the hook. Crochet two loops together by turn. Insert the hook into the same stitch three times and make three double crochets. After that, insert the hook into the next stitch and make three double crochets out of it as well. It means we're now tripling each stitch by making three double crochets in it. Yarn over, again make three double crochets into the next stitch. Same for the next one, three double crochets.
we've reached the last stitch. Make three double crochets as well. Let's count the crochets that we've made in the second row. Eighteen. Now let's make double crochets into the stitch that joins the beginning with the end of the first row. But just two double crochets, because we also had three chain stitches that we need to take into account. At this point you should get 20 crochets. The 21st crochet will join the row. And with that, cut the thread. Polyester thread tends to fall apart, so you better singe it. Then pull the thread out, join the beginning with the end of the row the following way. Slip the hook from the back under both loops of the first stitch of the second row. In other words, it is the third chain stitch that we previously made. Then pull the thread to the back and turn the work around. On the back, there is a back loop of the last stitch, and there is a connecting strap right below. Slip the hook both under the strap and the back loop. That's how it looks. And now draw the tail through the back loop and the connecting strap of the last stitch. Turn the walk to the front, tighten it up a bit. And as you may see, the stitch is identical to all other stitches. Count them once again. There should be 21 of them. 21 braids. Now we need to crochet another circle before starting to make the whorls of our shell. This time I'm going to bind off in a slightly different way. I'll be using a tail instead of the working thread coming from the skin. Let's frog the last double crochet. Crochet two last loops using the tail and then follow the same steps. Pull the tail to the back. Slip the hook under the connecting strap and the back loop. Pull the tail to the back again. And singe the tail and weave it in so that it doesn't disturb us later. But don't cut the working thread. It is a working end of the skin and we're going to use it to start the first row of the whorl. Let's make the first row of the shell. Raise the working thread up to the nearest stitch, right here. Pull it to the front and make 13 chain stitches. When all 13 are ready, we need to join them to the second circle. Note that the circles should have their fronts oriented in different directions. The circle that's closer to you should be turned front, and the one that's further should be turned back to you. And this is how we're going to join the chain. Move the working thread to the left should go below and choose the stitch you will attach the chain to. It doesn't really matter which one, any stitch will do. Insert the hook and note that I'm doing it from the front of the circle. Then pull the thread through all the loops on the hook. And we've made the joining. That's how it looks. Then make a chain stitch and we're going to crochet the first row in the opposite direction. It will be the first front row. Overall, the work will be divided into several sections. If you've made the shell from our recent tutorial, you remember that each whorl there constituted a separate section. This one is a bit easier though. The first section, likewise, is the most difficult. It consists of a couple of rows. The second section is the easiest and the largest. And we'll increase in the third section in order to shape up our shell. 
Let's start with the first section. It's convenient to think and count in terms of pairs of rows. I would later outline the basic principles of creating this pattern, but by then you'll probably have already understood them. First stitch is a slip stitch. The next one is a single crochet. It is a bit higher. Next one is a half double crochet. That's how it's done. Yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, draw the thread. There are three loops on the hook, which we crochet together. Done. Yarn over once again and make seven double crochets. When all seven crochets are ready, repeat the same elements that we've made in the beginning of this row, but in reverse order. It means next is a half double crochet. Three loops on the hook together, crochet them. You see each element is lower. Then a single crochet and a slip stitch in the end. Next we need to join this row to the circle. The principle is the same. Insert the hook into the circle to the next free stitch. We'll be joining each row into a separate stitch. One stitch for one joining. Pull the thread through all loops on the hook, make a chain stitch and turn the work around. From now on, the row will consist of single crochets only, except for the first and the last stitches. Those are slip stitches. Note that you should never crochet the slip stitch with the help of which we join the whorl to the circle. The last stitch you crochet is this full-scale braid in the row. Crochet it as a slip stitch as well, like that. After that, crochet all other stitches as single crochets. The last one, 13th, a stitch, make as a slip stitch again. Note that this row we've been slipping the hook and the back loop only. Not both loops, but the back loop only. These tricks help to create the relief of the surface. And now let's join the row to the circle. Now the circle is turned around, we're facing its back side. Place the working thread on the back side of the shell, like that. Insert the hook into the next stitch from the front side. Here is the front side and insert the hook and join the whorl to the circle with a slip stitch. Then the work around and make a chain stitch. We've made the first pair of rows and now I'll explain the basic principles of crocheting this shell. As you may see when looking from the front, one row is made with knit stitches and another one with purl stitches. The second row in the pair is always made of single crochets. One single crochet into each stitch without increases or decreases. In the beginning and the end of the row, always make slip stitches instead of regular single crochets. These slip stitches help joining the whorl to the circle. And from time to time we'll be making increases in the first row of the pair in order to enlarge the whorl, and make it wider and shape up the shell. Always slip the hook under the back loop only, in any row. It doesn't matter whether it's the first or the second stitch of the pair. We'll start doing increases in the second pair of rows in order to volume up our shell. Let me show how it looks on a ready-made shell. This is the first row, it is the smallest one and it creates the whorl. We increase starting from the second pair of rows. 
gradually adding the number of stitches and making the shell bulkier. Crochet the first stitch as a slip stitch and it will always be like that. After that, make two single crochets out of one stitch. So we are increasing. Then make a half double crochet. After that, three double crochets. And now when we need to make the fourth double crochet, make three double crochets instead of one. Thus will increase here as well. Like that. Then continue in reverse order. Three stitches with crochets in them. Simply make a double crochet out of each stitch. Then a half double crochet. This element is a bit lower. Two single crochets out of one stitch. And now there is one stitch left. It means that everything goes well and we've calculated correctly. Crochet the last stitch as a slip stitch. In simpler terms, it is also called a connecting stitch. Now let's join the whirl to the circle. Joining with this circle is a bit easier, at least if you're a right-handed person. Insert the hook from the front and draw the thread through all the loops on the hook. Make a chain stitch and turn the work around. Another important thing I would like to highlight is that our shell will have an invisible center line. It will curl uh, this way and the rows should be symmetrical with respect to this center line. So mind the symmetry. Elements in one of the parts shall be placed in reverse order. Now turn the work around and make the second row another half of the pair, as usual. Slip stitch first and then Single crochets. Single crochet into each stitch. The last one is a slip stitch. This circle is less convenient to do the joining. Move the working thread to the back, closer to you and find the next free stitch. Insert the hook from the front, draw the thread through all the loops on the hook and make a chain stitch. In the next row, the first stitch is a slip stitch again. Then two single crochets in one stitch, another single crochet, and then make a half double crochet Further on, make 9 double crochets, because in the previous row we added 2 additional double crochets. There were 7 of them, now there are 9. Make a half double crochet again. A single crochet, then two single crochets in one stitch, the same as we did in the beginning of the row. And in the end, there is one stitch left. Make it a slip stitch. Try to find the next free stitch in the circle to join the world to. Make a chain stitch, turn the work around, and crochet the row the whole row of single crochets in the opposite direction. Do not forget slip stitches in the beginning and in the end. The third pair of rows are ready. Let's move on to the fourth one, which is the last in this section. At first, as usual, make a slip stitch. Then two 
single crochets in one stitch. In the next stitch again make two single crochets. Then one single crochet. After that, make a higher element, half double crochet. Then make nine double crochets, no increases here. Go in a reverse order, half double crochet. single crochet, then two single crochets in one stitch, two single crochets into the next stitch, and a slip stitch in the end. Join the whirl to the circle, make a chain stitch, and crochet half of the pair as usual. Thus we've made four pairs of rows and finished the first section. We're now moving on to the most enjoyable and easy piece, the second section. All rows in the second section, at least first halves in pairs, will be the same. First stitch is always a slip stitch, then five single crochets, After that, when five single crochets are ready, make one half double crochet and nine double crochets. Having done that, go in a reverse order. A half double crochet, five single crochets, and a slip stitch. Join each row to the next free stitch of the circle, as usual. Make a chain stitch, turn the work around and make the second half of the pair with single crochets. Slip stitches in the beginning and in the end. All in all you should make 12 pairs of rows. Mind that the stitches are tight, the shell must hold its shape fairly well. Now let's start making our 12 identical pairs of rows. And once they're ready, we'll move on to the third section of the shell. 12 pairs of rows are ready. All in all, we've made 16 pairs of rows. Check yourself if you want. But count the front rows only. That create the main pattern. Count them to understand how many pairs of rows you've made. And now we're moving on to the third section that will involve uh, some changes in the pattern. The whole world will, be, will become wider. If you look at the ready-made shell, you will see that here is the place where the third section begins. It is much wider compared to the previous rows. And this will shape out the shell. We'll increase the half of the 17th pair of rows by adding two single crochets in the beginning and in the end of the row. It means make a slip stitch. As usual, then do the increase. Make two single crochets in one stitch. Then make four single crochets. Previously we made five, but this time we've doubled the first stitch, so there are four single crochets left. Make a half double crochet then. Then nine double crochets. Once nine double crochets are done, start in a reverse order. A half double crochet, then four single crochets. Then two single crochets in one stitch.
Slip stitch in the end as usual. Join the row to the circle. Make a chain stitch. And crochet the second half of the pair with single crochets. First and last stitches are slip stitches. We're not going to increase in the next pair of rows. Make a slip stitch. Then six single crochets, because we've added one single crochet from each side of the row in the previous pair. Now there are six of them instead of five. When all six single crochets are ready, make a half double crochet and nine double crochets as usual. Then a half double crochet, six single crochets, and a slip stitch. Then join this pair of rows to the circle, make a chain stitch, turn the work around, and make the second half of the pair as usual. The shell is getting wider, it's shaping up. The next pair of rows will do the following. A slip stitch, then six single crochets, don't increase here, we'll increase while making double crochets. When all six single crochets and a half double crochet is ready, let's go on to double crochets. We'll do them in the following way. First make four double crochets, each crochet into a separate stitch. done, in the fifth stitch make three double crochets instead of one. So insert the hook three times into the same stitch. Then make three double crochets. After that make four double crochets, each one into a separate stitch. And the rest is, I suppose, is clear. Half double crochet, six single crochets. And a slip stitch. Join the row to the circle. Make a chain stitch. Turn the work around and make the second half of the pair. Single crochet into each stitch. First and last stitches are slip stitches. The last pair of rows will be identical without increases. So make a slip stitch, then six single crochets, and a half double crochet. After that, make 11 double crochets, because we've added two additional double crochets in the previous row. That's why now there are 11 double crochets instead of 9. Then a half double crochet, 6 single crochets and a slip stitch. Crochet the second half of the pair in a standard way. The next pair of rows is the same. Make a slip stitch, 6 single crochets, and a half double crochet, 11 double crochets, half double crochet, 6 single crochets, a slip stitch. The shell will look better if you make two additional pairs of rows. Follow the same sequence. Now I'll show you how to join these rows given that we've run out of free stitches in the circle. The next to last pair of rows I'm going to join this slot, the place from which we started the first pair. The last pair of rows I'm attaching right here and making the second half of the pair. Finalize the shell, cinch the end of the thread and weave it on the back. And here it is, our smallish pretty shell. 
It is about 18 centimeters wide and about 23 centimeters high. The shell holds its shape rather well. You can put it somewhere and use it as a basket. I've made such shell in two variants using two different types of yarn. This one is made of round polyester yarn, 100 meters per skin. And to make this shell, one skin of yarn is enough. I used four and a half millimeter hook. That's why the shell keeps its shape really well. I leave the links to all sorts of round polyester yarns below. The description you can also find below. And for this shell, I used a different kind of yarn. It resembles a shoelace a bit. It is 20% cashmillan. It stretches a little, so it's a bit easier to work with. To make this shell, I used 6mm hook, a bigger one. And in general, this piece is bigger and bulkier. And it holds its shape better. I used almost two skins of yarn. To make this shell is 23 cm wide and 28 cm high. That is what's left. The skin is 75 meters long. I would like to mention once again that this shell is bigger in size, but much more pleasurable to make. It holds its shape better than the one made of round polyester yarn. You can donate to help me develop the English version of my channel. These donations will help me translate to English and voice over more and more tutorials. And you will become a sponsor of the channel. You may also add subtitles in your own language and thus contribute to the channel's development. I would really appreciate your help. Also, please subscribe to the channel and get updates of my new tutorials. Tap the bell icon to get the notifications when new tutorials are available on the channel. I'm always glad to read your comments. Please mention what you want to see in my future tutorials, what you like, and of course, good luck with your crocheting and wish you all the best. Bye-bye.